finalists reflect the character and spirit of the Women's March on Pretoria, which took place in 1956. It's an event honoured on Women's Day, the date chosen for this year's pageant. Kotatsu, your dream is to inspire others who perhaps feel misplaced or misunderstood. From your own experience, what advice could you give others who perhaps feel insecure? I would tell people to actually be themselves. By being yourself, you are bringing something that was never there in the world. And me being in this competition, I'm trying to show people that you can be different and you can be unique and you can still be beautiful. I know that Tamron Green, the current Miss South Africa 2018, is your role model. What do you love about what she's done with the title and what would you want to build on top of that if you were to win? So I had a TV scare two days before Tamron broke her Break the Stigma campaign and just her speaking up about it um, really helped me and I also want to pay that forward to young girls. How would you describe the bond between the girls this year? Incredible. It's actually like no other. We're all so different, but there's a connection between each and every one of us. It's really incredible. You are no stranger to pageantry. You were a former first princess for Miss Earth and Miss Ravonia. What advice could you give to other ladies wanting to enter a competition like this? Well, I would say that they must let go of the gremlin of fear. We have this fear, that, that voice over our shoulder that's saying, don't do it. And just give themselves a shot and trust that they are able to be in Miss South Africa one day. I think it's so fitting that the pageant this year is on Women's Day because these are the most intelligent and smart women I've ever met. They are a direct representation of what the women of 1956 would have wanted them to be. You know, it's just a bunch of amazing women coming together and I think it's the most brilliant thing ever. What does it take to prepare for a competition like this? It's a constant journey leading to the big day. So I've had a lot of ups, I've had a lot of downs, but they've always, they've, they've built me. And I'm willing to go out in the world and share what I've learned about myself and about other people as well, and to continue making a difference. How do you think a pageant like Miss South Africa can empower women all over the country? Well, I think that I'm living proof of that phenomenon because 15 years ago I watched Miss South Africa and every single day Miss South Africa empowered my decisions and empowered me as a woman. So I feel like when little girls look at me on the stage and in 15 years time they'll say that was because of me. Sasha Lee, how would you describe the Miss South Africa journey? The first thing that comes to mind for me is the fact that there's so much power in embracing all that you are. There's so much strength in diversity and for the first time this platform has actually showcased what South Africa has to offer and if anything I'm just so proud to be a part of that. Half the excitement is hitting the red carpet and hearing from previous winners the nation still loves. Miss South Africa is finally here and the competition is so tough, I had to bring in some reinforcements. Well, I consider myself a bit of a connoisseur when it comes to beauty, talent and skills. So I think I'm in the right place, shall we? Yes. I feel like 2019 has really taken it up a notch this year. Tell us about the changes you've made. Jade, firstly, I mean, can you believe it? You were my first, one of my first go years when Jade was a contestant. So, you know, it's amazing to see. And I think that's exactly what I've tried to bring to the forefront of this pageant. The dreams that they, they see from wherever they are from in this country and how this platform can elevate them. Tamron, how does it feel to be handing your crown over tonight? I'm very excited, but at the same time, I have butterflies in my tummy. I'm not sure if that's like nerves or just excitement. <laughs> what are some of the things that you prepare for after the whole event? Oh my word. it's gonna it's going to be challenging, it's going to be tough, but it's going to be worthwhile. Yeah. And enjoy it, embrace it. You're there to help your country, you're there to represent your country. So think about that in every step you take. The mark that women leave on this world is really unquestionable. The fact that we are here on Women's Day makes Miss South Africa even more special, celebrating who we are and everything we could possibly be. I think you only need to look at the finalists to see how Miss South Africa has changed and how inclusive it has become. And really, we're just saying to the youth that beauty really is unique. You know, it's clear that great minds think alike. But tell me, what advice would you have for some of the contestants here? Do you know what? I would uh, make sure that they stay true to themselves. Don't pretend too much and enjoy yourself in everything you do. Just enjoy. Rolene, first of all, congratulations on baby number two. You would never say. Thank you very much. At this stage, when we designed the dress, we didn't know whether we would have um, announced it yet. So we designed something that might hide a little baby bump. But thank you very much. You know what's extra incredible is that they decided to have the pageant this year on Women's Day. What do you make of that? I think that it just shows that this is about the strength of women. It showcases all types of women in South Africa representing as many women as we can. And we have an all-women judging panel. 
I am looking for a lady that's going to carry on the legacy that all the other Miss South Africans have worked so hard on building. Um, I'm looking for a lady that doesn't try and fit a mould, but that is her own mould and that is unapologetic about who she is. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody who just steps into the power because also this is the first year where we're looking for somebody who's compatible with the pageant, not necessarily going to adapt to everything that we say. Yeah. This time South Africa has done no. They need to be compatible with it and we need to meet them halfway. Welcome to South Africa. You Thank look you. dashing. Yes. What do you think of South Africa so far? You know what? I have the best impression, guys. I have not only had an amazing first impression from the girls of Demi and Tamarin um, sharing their love for their amazing Rainbow Nation, but to be here now to experience the wonderful people, you are all so warm and kind, and I'm just waiting on when I can come back. And what I'm most impressed by is that I heard you're wearing a South African designer. Yes, I am. The designer's BG, and I couldn't be happier. To the finalists tonight, I wish them the very best. The beauty is that you must make sure that you enjoy your time on stage because the two hours goes by so quickly. It's not only just about who takes the crown at the end of the evening, but it's about you know the sisterhood and the bonds that you form. So it's more about the journey. It's indeed more about the journey of hope. <laughs> which turned to jubilation as 25-year-old PR student and rising talent of advertising, Zozibini Tunzi took the title. She is so amazing. She's articulate, she's smart, she's, she's gorgeous. I love the fact that they celebrated diversity. Everyone here had a story. Everyone here was individual. And I think that's what Miss South Africa is. We're all so different. And I think the right queen won tonight. <laughs> I'm very happy, of course, because uh, she represents us. Up back, she's a posa, Ethan Cape, you know, she's from back home, and she's just doing it, she's killing it, bro. She looks amazing. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and members of the village that raised our beautiful Miss South Africa 2019 is right here with me, her parents. How are you feeling after this victory? This is absolutely uh, amazing. You know what, as a rural boy, I never thought that from my area, which is Tolos Dwadweni, that a Miss South Africa can come out of that area. I really, really, really can't believe that this has happened to my family. I'm sure you're so proud of your sister right now. I am very, very proud of my sister. I, I don't know what to say, but I'm very happy for her. A fan of comic superheroes, Zozibini is ready to answer her country's call. What was your strategy going into the competition? I didn't really have a strategy. Well, maybe if being myself is a strategy, then that was it. I'm hoping that the judges would love what they see and that they would pick me and yeah, they did. I think one of the winning strategies was copying my hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say, when did you get my picture to copy my hairstyle? <laughs> I actually can't remember the last time an African woman won having a natural hair. You know, this is how I've been for the past two years. Just because I'm coming into a different platform doesn't mean I need to change who I am. And I feel women all over the world, you know, have a choice to look how they want to look and to feel beautiful however they want to feel beautiful. One of the things that you are really passionate about is education and now that you are Miss South Africa what are you gonna do with this platform it's a big part of my life it's the reason why I'm here I mean without education I don't think I'd be able to sit um, and communicate the way that I communicate and I just think every South African child deserves to have one I mean children don't have books some have to cross bridges to get to school and I think it's like such a really really big issue and I really would love to be impactful in that space. The whole country is celebrating. We are so proud and happy for you. Look out for our in-depth top billing interview with Zozibi Nitunzi later this Women's Month.